This was the one. We're going to introduce our alpha fishy here. The alpha particle, in order for you to remember it, is going to be alpha decay. What's an alpha particle look like? Two protons, two neutrons. When we look at the chart of the nuclides, we find this is particularly stable. It's two neutrons, one neutron with a proton, deuterium. That's happy. If we had helium-3 with two protons and neutrons, kind of happy. Two neutrons, two protons, the alpha particle. Alpha, the Greek letter alpha, is a fish. It's got a two plus charge on it, so we give it a little eye here. So now, when you see an alpha fish, you're going to know that it's two neutrons, two protons. It's got a mass of four, but we only care about the electromagnetic charge of two on it, two plus from the two protons. So an alpha particle, this is the one we talk about, the triple alpha. Three helium alpha particles, three fishies, make a carbon-12. Carbon-12 with another alpha, oxygen-16. It's doubly magic, eight and eight. Another alpha, neon. So the stars, after ours is fusing, turning a down quark into an up, the next fusion process at 100 million degrees is the triple alpha, three alpha particles. This is what the alpha looks like. So Ernest Rutherford was able to take alpha particles, and he had a radioactive source of them. So what later went on to be Marie Curie's daughter with the French guy. So his daughter married a French guy too. They took the aluminum. Now this worked out particularly well because remember when we looked at the chart of the nuclides, 100% of the aluminum is the 13 proton, 27 mass, so 14 neutrons. That's the only isotope. 100% of the isotopes that you find of aluminum are going to be in the 27 mass, has to have the 13 proton to be aluminum. So when you shoot an alpha particle into that, you're going to add 4 to 27 would be 31, 2 to the 13 would be 15. So what are you going to go looking for? You're going to look for something with 15 that's going to be phosphorus. Now phosphorus has 31 mass. So what they found was a neutron was actually emitted. So a neutron was kicked out from this alpha. You ended up with a net adding of two protons, one neutron made a 30 mass phosphorus. Well, that was easy to figure out because all the phosphorus you find is right up from aluminum. Remember an alpha particle up from aluminum? Has a 31 mass. But for some reason, when you shoot the alpha into that, it doesn't take the whole alpha and be a 31 isotope. It ends up with a 30 by kicking out a neutron. So that makes me wonder, was the aluminum and the phosphorus made from alpha particles hitting? Or was it from another decay process when alpha particles were kicking out? But the only isotope you find of aluminum 14 neutrons, 13 protons. The only isotope, unless you make it, is going to have 31, which would be 16. This phosphorus has 15 neutrons and 15 protons. So this was a whole new thing that they made. Joliet Curie, Irene, was Marie Curie's daughter. So isn't that cute? Come on, look at that alpha fishy. Later on when you see uranium decaying by fission, it's going to be alpha fission. Huh? Here again was our carbon cycle, just in case we missed it before. We're going to go through this because it's really important. I believe that there was some alpha. Uh, Alphas that got together at the beginning of the Big Bang. And I know there's no tape. It's warning us. No tape. 
So what happens here? We've got carbon 12. We've got a hydrogen coming into it. The hydrogen, see, even I'm calling it that. It's a hydrogen proton. And the proton, because there's no electron there, so we don't call it hydrogen. It's just a proton. It's a bare nucleus. Two ups and down quarks, three gluons holding it together. That's a proton. And the proton slams in whatever, 100 million degrees, maybe more than that with this happening. Actually, it might not even need to be that much. But my theory again, they know that the hydrogen to helium ratio that was set at a certain time in the Big Bang standard model had a little bit of lithium, three protons, maybe a beryllium with four protons. I'm saying, what if just at the tail end of that bell curve, there's a little bit of boron and a carbon-12? Now, this carbon-12 can act as a catalyst by taking one hydrogen atom into it. It's going to raise the 12 to a 13, which will make it into a nitrogen. 13 protons, 13 mass, what am I saying? Six protons is carbon. Add another proton, seven protons is nitrogen. Kicks out a gamma ray, so no change in the identity. It's still a proton. Now, however, when the nitrogen emits a positron decay. This again, because like the sun fusing 13 mass, seven protons, carbon has six protons, but the mass is still 13. So a neutron, a proton had to turn into a neutron. This is the opposite of beta decay that we've been talking about. This is called a positron decay. So if this was happening in stars, now a positron is emitted with a real neutrino, not an antineutrino. This is a real neutrino, antimatter electron. The results, carbon-13, six protons, seven neutrons. Now. Carbon-13 gets another hydrogen proton nucleus into it. It's going to turn into a nitrogen again. What comes out? Gamma ray. So we see that whenever the proton hydrogen is slammed into the nucleus, only the energy of a gamma ray comes out. Now we're left with a nitrogen-14, and as we see, another proton coming in, gamma ray out now makes the oxygen 15. They call this the CNO cycle, carbon, nitrogen, and now we're up to oxygen 15. Now we know that oxygen 16 is a stable. That's got the magic number eight protons, eight neutrons. This is an oxygen 15. So what's gonna happen to the oxygen 15? It's not gonna be stable, so it's gonna emit Another positron, this is another neutron decaying. It's not a neutron, a positron, a proton decaying. A proton is going to kick out a positron. The mass, 15 stays. You go from eight protons to seven protons. We're back to a nitrogen. But now it's a nitrogen with a mass of 15. So what do we do? We hit it with a fourth proton. So this, the other one, is fusing protons to make neutrons. This is actually fusing the protons, and the protons decay into neutrons. I don't know if you call it a decay, because how's it happening? When the hydrogen comes in, kicks a gamma ray out, except notice this fourth time. When that fourth one comes in, no gamma ray. Three other times there were gamma rays. Three 